Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 15 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. We have been discussing the valence bond theory that was given by Hitler in London and they had talked of overlapping of orbitals and the idea of this overlap of orbitals was not enough to explain the structure of molecules. Therefore, the scientist Pauling, he modified it further and he gave the concept of hybridization which completed the valence bond theory. Let us talk about hybridization. What do you think of when you think of a hybrid, like a hybrid car? A hybrid car is one that runs on uh, gas and electricity both. So it is like there are two different cars which are powered differently, but once one the hybrid car is a mix of these two different things. Similarly, you have a bougainvillea, hy the hybrid bougainvillea, you have red flowers on a bougainvillea plant and maybe uh, white flowers on another shrub. And when you find make a hybrid out of the two, you may get either pink flowers or a shrub that gives you both white and red and pink flowers. So a hybrid is where you take two different things and you mix them and you merge them into one. Such uh, or merge them to give the same number of stuff or something that has characteristics of both the individuals. Now we do the same thing with orbitals. When atoms are about to combine and when they are about to form molecules, these atoms, the orbitals in these atoms, I told you, they overlap. And when they overlap, they provide the direction, they give directional characteristics to the molecule. But the s orbitals are spherical and the p orbitals are along the 3, x, y and z axis. But the molecules that are formed, they are not along, they don't have uh, structures with just 90 degree angles or they're not, uh, all the bonds that they form, they're usually uh, ha are more symmetrical in structure. So what happens? Just before uh, an atom is about to react to form a compound or to form a bond, it usually undergoes this hybridization. The orbitals, they undergo hybridization and it is these hybrid orbitals which participate in chemical bonding and impart the symmetrical structures or the characteristic structures to molecules. Do you know nature always favors symmetry? Nature always favors symmetry and you, even if you uh, think about yourself, anything that is symmetrical would look more appealing to you. So symmetry is favored by nature and that is why hybridization, these hybrid orbitals which are formed as a result of combining of these atomic orbitals, they are identical in their energy, they are identical in their shapes and they can be oriented uh, according to what we had studied in the Vesper model that according to the maximum repulsion or minimum uh, repulsion rate they can experience, so maximum distance uh, of the electron pairs so that they experience minimum repulsion. So let us now talk about the salient features of this concept of hybridization. So what is hybridization? Hybridization is the combination of atomic orbitals to form new orbitals in which energy is redistributed and these new orbitals are known as the hybrid orbitals which participate in chemical reaction. What are the important characteristics of hybridization? The first thing that you must always remember about hybridization is that the number of atomic orbitals that combine to get hybridized, the hybrid orbitals that are formed are exactly the same number as were the atomic orbitals. Let us say there is one s orbital and three p orbitals which combined. So how many total atomic orbitals are combining in hybridization? 1s and 3p so you have four orbitals so as a result of this combination of four atomic orbitals which hybridized you will obtain four hybridized orbitals and these four hybridized here we had 1s and 3p orbitals the s was spherical the 3p were along the x y and z axis but now the four orbitals that you get would be identical in shape they would be identical in energy and these four orbitals would be called the sp3 hybrid orbitals so we find the number of atomic orbitals is always equal to the number of hybrid orbitals that is formed the second point that you must always remember is that these hybrid orbitals that are formed 
they always have equal energy and they have the same shape that is the reason why hybridization occurs is to impart symmetry to the molecule to make it a balanced structure so these orbitals which were slightly different in their energies they merged together and resulted in the formation of these resultant hybrid orbitals which are all identical in their energy and in their shape the only thing they differ in while bonding is their orientation. So that was the second point. What is the next point about hybridization that you should remember? Hybrid orbitals are more effective in forming stable bonds. Why are they more effective in forming stable bonds? Again, because when hybridization occurs, you have identical bond, uh, identical uh, orbitals, and these identical orbitals occupy maximum distance from each other in space, and then they form their bonds. So maximum distance would be a situation of minimum repulsion and maximum attraction, which imparts stability. So they are, they would be more effective in forming stable bonds because they are identical and they would be symmetrical and they would be able to form uh, very symmetrical structures where maximum distance between the electron pairs can be maintained. The fourth point about hybridization is that they are directed in space like the p orbitals which are along x y and z axis these hybrid orbitals as we did in the vesper theory you remember if there were four pairs of electrons the shape of the molecule was tetrahedral you remember if there were four pairs of electrons around the central atom the shape of the molecule around that central atom would be tetrahedral if there are three pairs it would be a trigonal planar structure if there were five it would be trigonal bipyramidal if there are six pairs of electrons around the central atom it would be octagonal so uh, octahedral so we uh, sorry octagonal so we find that hybridization it is it, it imparts uh, a kind of a geometry direction to the bonds and therefore the hybridization can also be used as an indication of the geometry of the molecule if you know the hybridization you would be able to judge the shape of the molecule so these were the important characteristics or the salient features of hybridization let us now see what are the prerequisite conditions, what are the conditions under which hybridization occurs. So what are the important conditions that are required for hybridization to take place? The first thing is that orbitals of the valence shell and sometimes the n-1 shell, that is the penultimate shell, they hybridized. Usually, it is the orbitals of the outermost shell only that are participating in hybridization. But n-1 only participates when you have d orbitals of the penultimate shell. The reason for this is simple to understand. As we did the uh, in atomic structure, I told you about electronic configuration and we did the off bows principle. We know that the energy of the d orbitals of the penultimate shell is usually higher than the energy of the s orbitals of the next shell. Therefore, the energies of the d orbitals of the penultimate shell and the s and p orbitals of the next shell, the, it is quite similar since it is falling in between those two and therefore they can participate in hybridization. So we find that the condition is that the, it is always the electrons of the outermost shell which participate in hybridization if they are s and p orbitals but if d orbitals are involved you may have the d orbitals of the penultimate shell also participating in hybridization and the d orbitals of the same shell could also do so if the energy levels are similar the next condition is that orbitals that undergo hybridization, they must have almost equal energies. When we talk of hybrid cars, we talk of two cars which are powered differently. One runs on gas and the other runs on electricity and the hybrid car runs on both half electricity and half gas. Now, can you imagine that we have a hybrid car that is, uh, we have a hybrid car that runs on uh, electricity and we have a bicycle. 
and they try to hybridize those. Can you even imagine how that would be? What would we do in that car? Would we pedal it or would we would it run on electricity? Would we be uh, out in the open or would be sitting would we be sitting inside it? So you cannot imagine having a hybrid between two absolutely different things which are so different in their energies, in their shapes. So hybridization would only occur when orbitals are somewhat similar. They should at least be close to each other in their energy levels in order to merge and redistribute the energies. You can't have one here and one there and they're trying to hybridize. They, it is not possible for orbitals which are very, very different in their energies to hybridize. And that is the reason why that we say that when you have n minus 1, only the d orbitals of n minus 1 would participate in, uh, in hybridization. s and p of n minus 1 do not participate. Why? Because the s and p orbitals of n minus 1 and the energy of s and p of n, that is the valence shell, the difference would be much greater. So it is always the out of the valence shell which is which undergoes hybridization, the orbitals of the valence shell. Only the d orbitals of the penultimate shell may sometimes participate, but not the s and p. So we say they must have equal energies, somewhat equal energies to redistribute. The third point condition that is required for hybridization is that promotion of electrons is not an essential condition before hybridization. To explain this, let me tell you when does hybridization occur? When and or which orbitals can participate in hybridization? The orbitals which either have one electron in them or they have two electrons, that is half filled and completely filled orbitals, they can participate in hybridization. Empty orbitals do not participate in hybridization. So sometimes we find that there are atoms which show valencies where they had according to the ground state of the electronic configuration and following the Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity, we find that electrons may be paired but in order to have another orbital participate in hybridization, one of the electrons may jump up and occupy an empty orbital to make it half filled and once that it is half filled, that orbital can also participate in hybridization. So we find that in such a state where we find that an electron jumps up to a higher orbital in order to make it available for hybridization, such an atom which before hybridization you find electrons jumping around to make the atom ready for hybridization, that state is known as the excited state. So the, it is not necessary for atoms to undergo that excited state or push up electrons to occupy an empty orbital and only then hybridization would take place. It only happens when in hybridization the atom would, it would be useful for it to use that orbital also because around it it has atoms with which it can form bonds. Therefore it would like to use an extra orbital. That is when the electron would jump up to that orbital and that state is known as the excited state. But this is not a prerequisite condition for every time hybridization occurs. The excitation may happen is not necessary. It only happens when needed. Then half filled, I just told you that half filled and completely filled orbitals participate in hybridization. Empty orbitals do not participate in hybridization. So this was just the conceptual thing, the theory of what hybridization is. We will now move on to the types of hybridization and let us study hybridization further in the next video. Thank you for watching and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, recommend it to your friends, subscribe to my channel and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Bye-bye for now.